Welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. Let us observe this totally unedited surgery, totally unedited fecal emulsification. This is the main wound with a 2.8 mm steel keratome. The incision has been placed on the posterior aspect of the limbus. A side port is being made by the keratome itself. These incisions should include some capillaries and a bit of oozing of blood should occur. If there is a bit of bleeding, it means some capillaries are there and healing will be faster. And now in this case, I want to show you how to stain the capsule with tripan blue dye. Inject an air bubble in the anterior chamber. If there are a lot of air bubbles, don't inject the dye. Puncture these air bubbles and make a single air bubble. If there is a single air bubble, the dye will sit on the anterior capsule. The dye will not be diluted by aqueous and staining will be very fast, very nice. See, the dye has dust all parts of the anterior capsule and now the dye is washed out. Why? Because there is excess dye at this time and excess dye may cause dust. We don't know. So, and this is adrenaline. After injecting adrenaline, I wash the dye out and we can see a very nice staining of the anterior capsule. And now, the anterior chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Now let us see how to do rexis with uterata forceps. The uterata goes, the anterior all of the main wound is lifted off, a puncture is made at the center of the capsule, one side of the capsule is held and the tag is raised, this capsular tag is guided all around anticlockwise to get an adequate size rexis. Size of this rexis is about 5.5 millimeter. Hydrodissection is done with PSS. We have to be very gentle in hydrodissection. Just few days back, just by hydro, I have ruptured a capsule and a whole nucleus sank in the vitreous cavity. So we have to be very gentle, very careful in hydrodissection. The eyeball should be in primary position. We should be able to see the fluid wave or if we don't see the fluid wave we should uh, we should make the impression how much elevation of the nucleus is there if we can't see the fluid wave we have to be very cautious small aliquots of pss or ringer lactate should be injected at multiple points the nucleus is tapped and now watch submarine jaw the nucleus, the tip of the phaco needle is buried, it goes through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator and we get a very nice crack and there are some air bubbles, use irrigation and aspiration only to remove those air bubbles. Come to the other side, at this time hold one side of the hemineucleus and separate it completely and within seconds we have divided this nucleus which is about say grade 4 nuclear sclerosis. Definitely it is harder than grade 3 nucleus. The other hemineucleus is also divided into four and uh, into two pieces. Now think of it. If we do divide and conquer technique, how much time we will spend making the trench? How much manipulations will occur in the anterior chamber? How much fluid flow will happen in the anterior chamber? And those things cause some endothelial cell loss. So, if we do direct chaff, if we keep the phaco needle inside the lens mass, then the ultrasonic energy is within the substance of the nucleus and there is less chance of endothelial cell loss. And this is the last nuclear piece. I have detached the epinuclear shell and the epinuclear shell is using as a contact, being used as a contact lens. The epinuclear shell has been removed and in this case there is hardly any cortex. Some lens fibers are there, here and there.
My plan in this case is to implant the lens first and then use the irrigation aspiration cannula to you know, remove those lens fibers. That decreases the chance of catching the posterior capsule and making a rent. However, if there is lot of cortex, we have to remove the cortex first. I am making the main wound a bit larger because I am using a B cartridge. This is just one cut. Size of the main wound now is about 2.9 or 3 millimeter. And here goes the single piece monofocal intraocular lens and the lens is placed in the capsular bag just by a nudge of the left hand instrument. The trailing haptic goes in the capsular bag. We can see some lens fibers projecting and here goes the irrigation. With the irrigation we lift the anterior wall and press the eye well and aspiration cannula removes all those fibers. It's very efficient technique. It is very safe because the lens is protecting the PC. Done. So we have removed all the lens fibers. This is Moxie. The side port is closed by hydrating corneal stroma with PSS because the side port leaks but the main wound is triplanar, it will not require any hydration. We will see that in a short time. This is the final lavage with anterior chamber. The any, uh, any visco that sticks to the corneal endothelium is removed at this time by the Simco. The anterior chamber is nicely formed, keeping the tip of the Simco at the wound for a few seconds. Integrity of the wounds are checked by a cotton tipped Janssen bard. If there is no leakage, few drops of mox is over, applied over the cornea and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Try submarine chop. It is a very good technique to get clear cornea next day. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, compassion and great surgical competence.